Uh, so today we are down at our quarry site doing some testing. Uh, we've got a lot of guns out in front of us. Um, some of them modified, some unmodified. We've got gas in here and then we've got a mixture of TMs, uh, GNGs and BFCs. And BFCs. So yeah, what I want to address today in this video guys was we get asked a lot of questions about um, guns, accuracy, range, etc. That's varying from standard out the box as, we, as some of us like our TMs all the way to the guns that I like to run that are fully upgraded uh, to the max. So we kind of wanted to put some myths and some legends to bed uh, in today's range test uh, regarding accuracy and range really, regarding weight upgrades etc. Yeah, so I think one of the surprising things today about sort of diving into the results was um, about you know, using different weights BBs and how much that impacted the accuracy. Mm. So yeah. guys, what we're going to do now is cut to the footage, uh, the shooting footage, and then afterwards we will uh, come back and we'll talk about the results. So what we wanted to do first was chrono all the guns, starting firstly with Rich's VFC Scar H, and you'll see the results following. So after chronoing the guns, we got Richie in a comfy shooting position and you can see the two targets then down at the far end, 30 metres away from our current shooting position uh, with a wind of between 15 and 20 miles an hour. You can hear it in the footage, it does pick up at times, making it a little bit difficult to engage these targets.
So after shooting all these weapons at 30 meters, we decided to push back to the 50 meter line and use Rich's VFC Scar H. We also changed from 2.5 gram BBs to 4.0 BBs. One of the key issues that we then had with the footage was we was losing a lot of the light and there was a lot less of a significant impact on the target. And because of that, it was very difficult for us to pick up the impacts, uh, especially on this camera and on this bit of footage. As you can see from the wrap up at the very end, um, then there was impact packs on that target and actually held very very good consistency at that range. This is not zero so So the uh, sun's going down, had a yep. long day of shooting mate, um, really some, impressed, some, yeah, some good really, work behind the gun mate, good some, work behind the gun. Some really interesting results if I'm honest with you, um, like Tim says we're just losing light, it's been a long day, um, Tim's done all the leg work, running to and fro, <laughs> circling the targets, uh, counting the hits, um, I've been the lazy one today, I've just been laying down, getting some trigger time. Right, let's bounce through these boards then and we can, uh, we can go through the results. So, so first up. It's not going to be in order of shooting, by the way, but no. we'll just talk about the groupings and the distance. Sure. So the first step we're going to do was all set at 30 meters. Yeah. Um, this is 30 meters prone, as you would have seen in the video. Um, now this is uh, the TM Recoil Scar Heavy, which is Tim's. Scar Rail. Scar Rail. Just because, you know, someone will pick up on it. <laughs> <laughs> right. So as you can see here, so 25, uh, 30 meters, 0 0.2, we're using 0.25 gram BBs. Um, so we had one, two, three, four, five hits. Um, if I'm honest with you, that's quite a good grouping. Um, Got a bit of wind here, a bit sort of crosswind, but. So yeah, towards the end of the results, we were getting quite a hefty crosswind right across the end of the target. It really was, a, you know, a west to east wind coming right across the target. So this <laughs> made things a little bit difficult, but you know, it wouldn't be a true test if there wasn't some kind of variable in there. So as you can see, and quite, in my opinion, quite a reasonable grouping. Decent grouping, yeah. I mean, 30 meters yeah. for a lot of airsoft this is actually 15 meters. Exactly. Uh, but a proper 30 meters is, is a good distance. And when you're standing looking down at a man-sized target, it's, uh, it's a fair chop. So I think, you know, that is, sent, you know, if you look to that grouping on a person, that is within the plate carrier size. Yeah. So, so if, you, if you look at this, obviously I'm a of, of slim build. <clears throat> <laughs> you know, all five of those rounds are in centre, like Tim says, in centre mass, yeah. that all five will count as a hit. So if you were putting rounds down on someone at that distance, you know, you've got a very high probability of, of taking, yeah, absolutely. taking the player out. Now obviously what we're going to try and do guys is each one of these guns, we will try and include a description of all of the upgrades or not, if it's fresh out the box. Yeah, if it's fresh out the box we'll stay. Uh, if there's any questions you do have about any of the platforms, what's, you know, any of the small details, then please let us know, but we will yeah. list either in the description or it'll be previous on the videos to yeah. where they're upgraded. Absolutely. So there we go. So yeah, happy with the Scar L, completely uh, happy with that, uh, you know, unmodified. So uh, this is my TM Scar, Scar Heavy Recoil. Again, 30 meters, uh, 0.25 gram BBs. So one, two, three, four rounds on target. Bit of a fly here. Um, nice grouping up top. Yeah, super yeah, happy with that. Probably tighter, one of the tightest little yeah. groups of, of shots. Again, you know, we're in varying conditions here, you know, and uh, there's a lot of crosswind as you can hear in the video. So, yeah. yeah, to get a little group like that on someone, you know, of eight shots, which is not a lot to put out onto a target. Uh, yeah, super impressed with yeah. that. Again, both, you know, running standard barrels, yeah. um, standard TM internals, other yeah. than. Um, You've so, got a spring change. So obviously this one has the uh, Tony Soft uh, spring in there, um, as well as AOE correction, piston head, etc., etc. A few bits from Tony Soft there, um, but nothing that will really, you know, that the barrel is standard on this. Now, this one I will say, obviously what we're doing, so we put eight shots on target. Yeah. So every gun, every target was eight shots. So as you can see, we've got four out of the eight. Now I will say with this one, when we've done this test, 
the wind did pick up while there's a crosswind. So, you know, is this a true reflection? Yes, because wind is a variable. You know, it's going to affect it. But, you know, when the wind, so you had, we would pick up, would die down. Obviously, when the wind did die down, you can see the grouping is pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty you good. Know? So, TM recoil, scar heavy, 30 meters, 0.25s. So quite happy with that. Right, next up is Tim's new little baby. Is his uh, TM MP7 uh, gas blowback. Now, this was the only one that got eight out of eight on the day. Yeah, yeah. Um, that is absolutely bog standard out of the box. It's yeah. nothing done this whatsoever. Um, when I had mine, I know mine is many, many years old now, but still super impressed with the accuracy and the range on this. <coughs> so again, 0.25 grab EBs, 30 meters. Some real nice grouping down here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, like Tim says, all out rounds on target, uh, eight rounds on target. And again, if you're holding it up here, that is a definite, like that's a good You've really range. hurt someone in that, in that yeah. factor. So yeah, again, you know, completely standard, you know, uh, the shortest length gun of all, uh, of the day as well. I've got the run suppressor on there, but if you do take the suppressor off, um, you know, really compact little unit, yeah. can definitely reach out and, uh, and touch and obviously, someone. obviously, I know we know the sun is out, the sun is shining today, but it is still only about nine degrees. Yeah. So realistically, you know, it's quite cold conditions for a gas blowback gun. So um, yeah, well impressed, impressed, with, that. impressed with that. Um, as always, TM coming through with the goodness. Okay, so next up we have the, uh, one that I've had for quite some time. This gun's got a lot of miles on it, like Tim says. Um, VFC, base, and I say base because it's had a lot of upgrades to it. Um, this is set up as a DMR. So it has the ASCU Gen 4 in it. Um, it's got a Mad Ball 6.03 Type Ball. Prometheus? Prometheus bucking. bucking. Yeah, it's got and, a different uh, nub in there, I've no idea. Different nub and, and, and a purple rubber. I'm not sure the, the, the make on that, but... Um, it's got some upgrades. It's got some upgrades to it. So, again, uh, 0.25 gram BBs because, you know, that's what I've always used. It's what I've used in all my guns. But we found out today, didn't we? We did learn today that, um, yeah, maybe we're changing that. Yeah. So, again, 30 meters, eight rounds on target. Um, hits. If I'm honest with you, good um, group. really good grouping. So, one, two, three, four, really super tight there. Um, slight flyer off here. But that is, you know, that's negligible. I'm super happy with that. Yeah, I mean, I think the other ones, from what I can remember as well, is hit the target either side on the edges as yeah. well. I think there's a few flicks of where it's just, just off. clipped the edges. So again, yeah. you know, really precision, you know, good precision from that. The nice thing about this, when you look at all the rest of the groups, is how flat it is. So, you know, the, the, a lot of them have got a lot of sort of vertical spread. This has got none. So you can see there's like very little fluctuation in power yeah. that's going to give it lift or, or blow, you know, lift or, or, or dip. So for that, for me, was was probably the most impressive of the day. I mean, obviously the accuracy at the MP7 was good, but yeah. super impressed with that, nice and flat. You know, at yeah. the end of the day, if you're trying to drop them in on someone or you're letterboxing someone, then, um, you know, for, for me, that, that was uh, really impressive. Yeah. Obviously the VFC uh, is set up to DMR, so it's pushing 380. Yeah, I think we, we've got the chrono results as well for the guns. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Um, I think it was, it was it's punchy, but, punchy it's, but it's not breaking any rules. But people. like Tim says, you know, compared to some of the others, were just at the end of 30 meters, sort of just starting to drop off, just a tight, just I mean, small amount. This was pretty flat. So, like yeah. I say, you know, if you're getting that tight, um, tight opening, it will get in there. Okay, so pushed out the distances now. Um, this is not just paced out, this was properly measured from the target. 50 meters is a long way. Yeah. Um, we hear, I've had loads of people talk to me about 50, 70 plus meter kills. 150. And, and I've seen people ranging stuff out. And so, you know, this is legit. We'll put some photos in now that I took from, you know, Richie's shooting position. 50 meters is a long way, especially for a target like this. It's actually yeah. quite narrow. Um, let's get, Tar you know, shots accurately on target at that distance is, is quite quite impressive. So, you know, looking now at these results is uh, is something that, for me, um, really opened my eyes to what the capabilities were. You know, I fired my Scarrell down to this distance as well. Had no problem making the distance, which was surprising at yeah. such a low FPS gun. Um, 2.5 is 250 FPS. So, you know, it's, uh, we're not breaking any, no, any rules by, here. By any stretch of the imagination. So like Tim says, you know, uh, 50 meters, 
hell of a long way. And when people talk about touching those sort of distances, um, if I'm honest, if I ever see someone on, on the, you know, out there playing with the skirmish or milsim and the 50 metres, the gun's normally at this sort of angle, yeah. you know. <laughs> trying um, to drop them in. Trying something. to drop them in. You, you know, I've done it myself in the past. Well, yeah. I've not had a, a gun that's that rangy. But 50 metres is when you pace it out. We have, we've had the tape measure. It's all done. It's not, Legit, yeah. it's not paced. It's all done properly. So, what we did, obviously, um, we were kindly supplied some parts uh, from the guys over at Skirm Shop. Thank you, guys. Um, Cheers, Dan. Thank you, Dan, at Sk uh, Skirm Shop. Um, and the Sniper Mechanics boys. So, we were given a uh, TNT uh, barrel, multi-bore barrel, as well as a uh, SRS nub and a 60 degree rubber. Yeah. Now It's a TNT uh, bucking. TNT bucking. So all these parts, we basically, we field strip this. It's good fun, <laughs> never done it before. <laughs> at, 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 at the back of Tim's wagon. So we stripped the VFC down, changed out the, kept the hop, hop unit was the same, stripped out the barrel, the rubber and the nub, uh, and then we obviously took it back down to the range, obviously, going from 30 meters, pushed it out to 50 meters. So these are the results. Uh, one other thing to add is on the recommendation of Dan, a skirm shop, yeah. uh, we upped it to 0.4 gram BBs. What a game changer. Now, me and Tim was like, what? No, we're not gonna use 0.4s. We might push the 0.28s. Point yeah. 0.28s at a push if, you know, if, if we're feeling lucky. We just didn't think that we would get the distance. Well, let me let me tell you this. Yeah. <laughs> See here. Um, so VFC Scar Heavy, upgraded barrel, rubber, and nub. So we haven't changed the hop unit. We haven't changed the spring. No power change. Nothing. No power change. Nothing. So this is 50 meters with a 0.4 gram BB. Now this was two, four, six, eight. That's eight out of eight shots on target. At nearly double the distance we were shooting at. If anything, the wind had picked up yep. even more at this point. Um, and just hearing the contacts down at the, uh, you know, at, at the target end was, um, you could hear the difference. We stood side by side, I shot my Scar L um, with the two fives in and then yep. put the fours down on target. A very big difference on impact. You can also see actually between the two boards. So if you look at the impact that's actually made, you've got light indentations here. You yeah. look at the difference in the in the holes. They're almost pushing through the into yeah, the back of the cardboard. They're really embedded they're in, in the in the in the uh, cardboard itself. So you know, same gun, same power, um, different weight BBs, and and a different hop and barrel, and you've yeah. got a completely different result down at the target. End. And, and when Tim says a completely different, you know, uh, gun, I mean this this thing, it just blew my mind how how true and how flat these rounds travelled. I owe Dan beers because I kind of called him on bullshit. Yeah. Sorry, Dan. My <laughs> yeah. bad. I mean, if I'm honest with you, with me and Tim had many conversations about this, and I, when, when, when we chatted to Dan about 0.4 gram BBs, you know, I mean, yes, it's pushing 380 FPS, but, you know, 0.4 is a heavy round. Is it? Need double. Nearly double Nearly what double. You, you used uh, every day. And, um, you know, the results really did come in here. Heavier yeah. wind, you know, near double the distance and, and, you know, a very tight grouping, you know. 50 yeah. metres again is a long way. I, I would, re I really recommend that you guys, when you get to your field, you go to skirmish field, you go to Milstons, whatever, just pace it out. Just yeah. pace out 50 metres and stand that distance between people. You know, I, I, it's very easy to go, oh, that's about 50 yeah. metres. Do it, stand between one another and, and yeah. realise how great of a distance that is. Um, again, put some 50 metre photos in so you can see that. So obviously, my point of aim, point of impact here, um, obviously none of these guns were zeroed. We didn't really have time to set and zero every gun. So we did a couple of test shots to point of aim, point of impact. So uh, horizontally wise, you know, elevation, I, I was aiming here. You know, that just gets you at 50 metres, these rounds were travelling flat yeah. I mean really flat you know and they still had a lot more to go uh, windage wise I was, I was it, the, like Tim says the wind was picking up so I was probably my record was about here somewhere to yeah. adjust for the windage but you know we're talking here whereas some of the rounds earlier on to adjust for windage I was over here you know it just that that extra weight in the round much, yeah much truer uh, less much, adjustment to be made and yeah yeah, I, I, again, you know, this result for me now, yes, there's, you know, we've upgraded, uh, you know, so it's a combination potentially of barrel uh, and nub and the weight of the rounds, but, you know, 
we we saw the the, the weight of the rounds in other in some of the other guns, and it really did make a big difference. Yeah, um, yeah. So super impressed with that. Good result. Yeah. Um, just obviously, so that goes to show the difference between the uh, thirty meters and fifty meters upgraded. Just going back uh, to the thirty meter line, uh, we had my uh, G and G Scar L, which is not really a G and G. Not anymore. Not it's, anymore. it's got a GNG body, but everything else is custom. Everything else is custom in that. So, realistically, again, 0.25 uh, gram BBs and um, 30 meter line. Now, again, some really tight groupings on this. Two, four, six, seven. I think we missed one. Yeah. Like Tim says, it was just off. Just off, off the, the target. Edge. This yeah. is one of the narrower boards that we had today. So yeah. It's excusable, but it really does a sort of really, sit. really good result. Uh, again, you know, a nice horizontal grouping. Uh, you know, when you get these big vertical spreads from it, it shows that the gun's, yeah. you know, not consistent with, with power, whereas, you know, it's really sort of flat spreads. It's, yeah, yeah. it's good. I, I, mean, I think the only thing I would distance. say about the, about the G&G, obviously it has got an upgraded uh, hot rubber, nub, and hot. Yeah. What I found with this one, compared to some of the other platforms, the rounds were sort of curling in. You know, th at this point, I was aiming up here, they were, and off here. Yeah. So the rounds were sort of curling in. And although, once I got a point of aim, point of impact, uh, the grouping was very good, as you can see. But, you know, if, if you have to take one shot, and one shot only, you know, it's, you haven't, you just haven't got that range, yeah. really. That nice, true, flat range is, is what you're sort of lacking on the G&G here. But overall, it's it's pretty good. Yeah, pretty good. So, um, seventy meters. Seventy meters. So we never would I have thought that an AG would push out seventy meters. Obviously, yeah. Um, you know, my experience. I spent a lot of time sniping. I know a lot of snipers that struggle to get out seventy meters accurately. Um, Many, many snipers out of the box won't reach out to 70 metres. I know that there'll be loads of people spamming now in the comments that their you know, gun shoots 100 out of the box. But, yeah. um, I'm telling you now that it's very difficult to get to 70 metres accurately. And after shooting this uh, out to 70 metres was very, very impressed. Also, the rate of fire, you know, you literally can go blip, 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 and have four shots in the air on target. I'm shot really easy with that. Yeah, it's really incredible. Easy. Really, really good platform. So, again, Obviously, at 50 meters, the rounds were super, super flat. We had a discussion, 60 meters, we thought, you know, let, let's push it, let's push 70 meters. Because yeah. we, we felt that the hop had a little bit more in it to, to, yeah. to, to give. Now, what we found with this result is, the group in here, so we out of eight shots, we had one, two, three, four, five rounds on target. At 70 meters. At 70 meters. So that's the same as at 30. Yeah. Five out yeah. of eight. Yeah. It's um, very, very impressive. Very impressive. Now, obviously these are uh, 0.4 gram BBs again. Now, with this result, what I found was, is um, it wasn't so much, the, 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 the round itself still flew pretty flat. Yeah. Pretty flat, pretty, pretty true. Obviously, I think maybe the last, maybe five meters, you just sort of slightly dip. It's just starting to come off. Um, but what I found with this was I was really the biggest thing to affect it at this distance was windage. Yeah. So I always had to aim here somewhere to, 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 to get the rounds to cut in because, like I say, we did have quite a strong crosswind. But, you know, like Tim says, at 70 meters, that's a long way. That's a very, you know. It's a long way. It's, it's, it's a very incredible engagement. And, yeah. you know, a lot of the time that I see someone at 70, 80, 90 meters, I'm not even faced by them. I just think, fuck it, you're not going to shoot me at this no. distance. You know, I really am relaxed at that point. And maybe that's, you know, something that I need to heavily reconsider that, you know, there is DMR platforms uh, and, and potentially, you know, AG platforms with, with the right internals using the right weight BBs that could definitely put rounds on target yeah. at that range which was very very surprising yeah. you know this again a very narrow board you know that is someone side on that he could potentially be taking rounds from an AG at 70 meters yeah. uh, with windage you know in in an environment where you know we are quite high up here uh, in the quarry so you know there is change this isn't a sterile environment we, we mm. totally don't we, we discussed it this morning we don't agree with a sterile environment for testing um, maybe for barrels or something but you know you're never shooting in those environments it's so yeah. hard to to test where here you've got the changing environments you know you've probably got a little bit of humidity from this morning the guns being out in the cold all day yeah uh, especially the gas guns are 
yeah they're cold yeah. this has been in the sun now for about 20 minutes and it's it's still very cold so yeah yeah super impressed super impressed so i think with, with this one again you know obviously we, we field strip this we put the internal parts into it you know within sort of half an hour so we only really had sort of 20 minutes you know on the range with this you know with this new new, new setup so I reckon with a bit of time, a bit of practice, if you know, you know, the more you, I, I get to use this gun, the yeah. more I'll know how it performs in the wind. And, you know, I'm talking these, these hop adjustments are done on the fly. Yeah. I think with a bit of practice and more time behind the gun, mm -hmm. you know, it won't take three or four shots to, to, to you know, to bring this in yeah. with, with some wind. I think you'll be able to put that one round in and die 70 meters. Yeah. And, you know, you're, you're talking that sort, of, that sort of sniper distance from an AG. Um, Massively impressed. Super Massively. impressed. So we're just getting you know fairly wrapped up. Um, yep. Guys, you know, if you are using AG platforms, please don't, you know, count them out as, as not being able to reach out there to, to some distance. Don't feel like you've got to go and pump a ton of money into these guns. Um, yep. Impressed really for me the, the standard TM platforms. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a standard gun user. I, I, I'm an advocate of, you know, not, not upgrading unless you really need to. Yeah. Um, seeing what can be achieved at upgrades uh, with uh, Richie's VFC is, is incredible. Yeah. Uh, absolutely incredible. That is for me a counter sniper weapon yeah. uh, at, at a DMR platform at, at the actual bleeding edge of, of engagement distance. I think, you know, out to 80 definitely can be done. You know, 75, 80 meters. It's, it's something that that yeah. weapon could definitely achieve, uh, especially in, in the right environment. So, but, yeah, yeah, blown away. Just, just incredible. And, and results, yeah. The difference in weight, you know, going up to point fours, you've seen it in the accuracy test, um, held those Titans, you know, the, 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 the groupings yeah. tighter. And, you know, TM, GNG, VFC, they've got them all here, yeah. and they're all reaching out to those distances. So, um, I, I think, we, yeah, what, what, but, you know, just coming away from the upgrades a little bit, you know, going back to TM, to TM uh, MP7. Again, one of probably the best performing guns, probably second best performing gun today. Yeah. Um, and I'd say best non-upgraded yeah. performing gun. And today. for a gas gun, and, you know, and that's something for me is always like. And like you said, you know, for the barrel length, you know, you've got a tiny, tiny package that is able to shoot that. Said, yeah, 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 hey. the other beers. Um, um, yeah. So look. What you know today's lesson for us is is it's very much about what weight BBs you're using. That does have the massive, yeah. uh, a, a really big impact. And um, you know across a variety of platforms, you can still reach out and, and hit people at 30, 50, and 70 meters. The 70 meter shots were the most impressive for me. Um, if you guys want any more information on upgrades, parts, bits and bobs that we've been using, please yeah. feel free to drop us a message. Um, all the bits were supplied to us by the guys over at Skirm Shop. So a massive yeah. thank you to yeah, them. Yeah, you guys. If you haven't been out to check them out please check out the guys over at Skirm Shop yeah so just again just to go over it, it you know the, the barrel we were using was a, a TNT multiple barrel um, which I think because we were having this conversation about is it the weight VBs or is it the barrel is it the hop I think it's a combination of everything yeah. and you know really like you said I think we owe Dan a beer because we kind of doubted him but we shouldn't have done because yeah. it, you know the results really speak for itself and we did exactly like he said he said use point fours with this this and this and the results and were absolutely amazing so yeah thank, thank you to the guys at Scam Shop incredible if you do have any questions on any setup or anything yep. you've seen today please put a comment in the box below we will have some new apparel coming out probably in the next couple of weeks yep. um, that'll be heading over to Teespring uh, hopefully we've ironed out all the problems and issues yep. that people have with them now so uh, that should roll out nice and smooth lots more content coming to the channel soon comms related night vision related we've got a lot of videos uh, in the works yep. if you are interested in rolling with us at an event please let us know where you guys are going in the next year uh, over Christmas whatever we are really interested in uh, getting out and meeting some more of you so um, yeah if you uh, fancy you know a bit of a tear up out yeah. on Sunday please let us know we're always up for it let us know where you're going to where you're heading to any, any local sites or it seems etc yeah anywhere um, exciting we'll, we'll, we'll come up and uh, also stay tuned guys because obviously we've, we've got some really cool stuff coming next year I know we are slowly but surely wrapping up 2018 uh, it's been an incredible year for us yeah for myself and Tim um, I actually love every minute of it so um, but that being said looking forward to heading into 2019 yeah got some uh, Big very things. very exciting things coming right guys thanks very much for watching we'll see you soon